Hi, welcome to Leading Virtually. My name is Erin Frost and I am the Learning and Development Business Partner with the Event Group. I specialize in leadership and well-being training and I'm currently working from home with two children, so I hope uh, they don't interrupt us. So our agenda for today is really looking at, first and foremost, empathizing with our employees, making sure that they feel that their emotions are being acknowledged. We're gonna look at establishing team norms and ways in which to communicate with our teams to be most effective and as a leader to be most accessible. So the first thing I really wanna talk about is keeping calm and empathizing. So like with any abnormal or crisis scenario, employees really need their leaders, not only to remain calm, but to empathize with both their thoughts and feelings. They need their leaders to react and respond with emotional intelligence. And what I mean by that is notice and understand the emotions of others. I want you to create opportunities to ask First and foremost, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What was your weekend like? Now more than ever, it's really important that employees feel that their feelings and emotions are being acknowledged, that their well-being is your number one priority. Once you acknowledge the emotions, you can move forward to focusing on work, but until people feel that they're being supported, they're not really going to be able to engage and they're not going to remain focused. So it is really in your best interests, but also it builds a stronger team and a stronger network for you as well. If the concept of these conversations to you feel absolutely terrifying and you think, I'm not really sure how to start a, a conversation about how someone's feeling, it's, it's quite foreign to me, it's not something that I've ever tried to do before in, within a team, um, I ask or really, ask you to consider looking at the change curve. Um, so to start these conversations, you can really ask everyone, where are you on the change curve? Um, where are you today? Are you number one, still in shock? Are you in denial? Are you number seven in problem solving, which is fantastic? But this is a great tool to start those conversations and get people to start maybe reflecting on their own feelings and thinking about where they are but also you can ask, well, how do you think you can move from two denial into six acceptance? What do you need from me? What do you need from the team? What resources do you have? So start these conversations and get people thinking about how to be proactive about their own emotions and their feelings, but also how you can support them as a leader. Of course, this uh, change curve is widely used in, in business and change management. And there are many variations and adaptations that you can find online. Um, it's often attributed to psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, um, resulting uh, from her work on personal transition in grief and bereavement. But as I said, it can be a really useful tool if you're not sure how to start those conversations. So once we've acknowledged emotions and once we've acknowledged how we're feeling, we can start to move forward and ask, you know, how are we going to now work virtually? This might be really foreign for some teams. Some teams will have never worked from home um, or they've never had to really build their own schedule or not have somebody looking over their shoulder all the time. If that's the type of management style they're used to. They're going to need a lot of direction, but one of the great ways to, to really start to think about how you can work more successfully as a team is to ask as a team how they want to move forward. Again, we're trying to create proactive behavior so that people can drive their own work at home. So um, what I would suggest doing is asking. Set up a meeting, ask everyone to put their video on because I think it's important right now to see faces, um, to interact where it seems like we're actually still engaging. Um, but ask, do we meet more frequently as a team? So do we need to meet twice a day online? How long? So consider all those little catch-ups at the, the water cooler or walking down the hall, going to make a cup of tea, all those conversations stop. So what does that look like? What information is shared in those moments? And, and how can you recreate those moments virtually so that you don't lose out on those key conversations? How do you want to, to meet? Do you want to use a conference call or an online meeting platform? Like I'm using Zoom, you might use Teams, whichever works for you best as a business. Ask if everyone um, is using an online meeting platform, do you all turn on your videos? I think just from personal experience over the last two weeks, I think 
being able to see each other's faces makes a really um, big impact on me. It makes me feel that I'm connecting with people rather than just talking at my laptop. So I think it's an important point to make and to ask. And quite frankly, all of us first worried because we weren't wearing makeup and now none of us care. So we're just showing up as we are. How do you ensure that people are present and not multitasking? So having video on is one way to do that. But if you're having a virtual meeting, just like in any other meeting in any other setting, you wanna make sure that people aren't looking at their phones, they're not answering emails, that you can't hear the tap, tap, tap of, of um, people typing on their keyboard. So how are you going to make sure that people are present? Ask them, what do you think we should do? If, some, if we can tell that somebody's multitasking, maybe we'll make them sing a song to the rest of the team or some silly, um, silly forfeit that will be humorous and add a little bit of um, color to your day. And what is your recommended response time to a text or email? Should we use the phone more? So again, this is just another way to say, look, we're not all working together. We can't see what's happening. So we need to make sure that if somebody calls or somebody texts or emails, how quickly are we gonna get back to them? Um, what should our responses time, what should our response times be? Um, and what do people prefer in regards to communication? So this is a good starting point to kind of get the team thinking about how are we going to work virtually, but also how are we going to work together as a team? And maybe moving forward, we're gonna start making a lot of these decisions together as a group, rather than just um, being told by a leader how things are gonna happen. So again, this is another way to engage your team, get them thinking proactively. You're really going to have to do a lot of work <laughs> as a leader to um, ensure that everyone is feeling supported and engaged. And it may feel like you're doing even more work now that you're working virtually because you need to create these touch points that maybe you never had to consider before. Again, you're not making a cup of tea in the kitchen where you can have a quick chat. Someone can't just pop by your desk. So how can you create that? Virtual open office hours is a nice idea. And that's uh, about putting yourself on Zoom, setting up um, maybe on Teams, on a Friday, it could be maybe for two hours, you just have yourself online and anybody can drop in, send out invites and say, it's really informal. There doesn't have to be an agenda. It's just you being able to pop in, share an idea, share a thought, um, and then pop back out again. So how can you still engage with your team, make them feel that you're accessible? So they might think, oh, I don't wanna call. She's probably really busy. She doesn't have time right now. Well, actually, if you create these virtual office hours, you'll still get um, those great ideas or that great engagement from your team um, at a time that suits you and they'll feel more comfortable reaching out. Morning huddles. Now this is something that we do as a, as a business. We've always adopted a morning huddle mentality, but of course it doesn't work um, or it hasn't um, been implemented in every business, but it's a really great, another great opportunity to check in with people. I would suggest, again, video if everyone's open to it. This is also a great time for us to start to think about those people who might be self-isolated and living alone. If you think about the interactions, the social interactions they would have had going into work, um, whether it be on public transport or buying their morning coffee, going in saying hello to a security guard or engaging with people in the office, those routines, that um, socialization is all gone now. And that's actually quite terrifying. Um, so we need to try to create interaction again. First thing in the morning is great because sometimes it can be a bit difficult to motivate ourselves in the morning, especially now that we're just stuck in our homes all of the time. So let's have morning huddles, set up a morning huddle. It could even be 10 minutes before the work day because we're not commuting into work anymore. Um, it should be an open um, forum for you to kind of discuss the day, ask everyone to share what they're doing, meetings, tasks, projects, be open about the work they're doing. Publicly recognize someone. Um, so again, feedback is really important. We're not seeing each other every day. We're not able to see the way that people are working until perhaps the end result. They send you, send you the, the, the work that they're doing or they're interacting with customers and you get the feedback on that. But use this opportunity to publicly recognize someone and say, hey, I've got a shout out um, to Zoe. She's done a fantastic job on um, this project work. Well done, Zoe, thank you very much. Um, provide updates to the team. So there's so many updates at the moment, um, just with coronavirus in and of itself. 
So provide some updates, things that will impact people, things that will matter, but try to keep it light um, and try to maybe if you share something about coronavirus that might be a bit negative, then counterbalance it with something positive or a funny story. Share personal stories. So tell your team how you're doing. Tell your team um, how you're feeling. Let them um, understand that you are also finding it difficult or maybe something funny that happened to you on a webinar, anything, just a way to, again, engage um, person to person and to make people feel connected, that they're getting some social interaction um, from you as a team. Frequent check-ins. So again, if you're having your morning huddles, fantastic, and maybe you're doing your open office hours once a week, but you need to be checking in as well throughout the day. So it could be text, um, just a quick check, text, how are you doing? I know you're working really hard on the Smith project, just wanted to check in and see how it's all going. WhatsApp groups, um, we have that as a team and we just send pictures of what we're eating for lunch because of course everything revolves around what we're eating now <laughs> in the day that's the most exciting part of our day or pictures of our pets or our children, um, funny memes. So just anything that you can do to kind of create um, a light mood or something inspirational. Email, of course, DM. You could forward articles, um, TED Talks, maybe something inspirational or something you think that would be specific to that person. If you can do that and if you have the time, that again makes it really special. It makes people feel that they're being acknowledged and um, that their needs are understood. And I know that this is a, a quite a terrifying situation and there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of fear. Um, we don't know how long we'll be self-isolating for. The best way that we can move forward and the best way to stay positive is to really find purpose in, in this situation. And one way to do that as a leader, just think about all the opportunities you have to really shape and impact your team. So maybe now you have more time to have your one-on-ones or you have more time to coach, you have more time to give feedback, utilize those opportunities. Um, invest in your in your team members and let them let them feel that even though we are dealing with difficulty, your investment in them, um, the opportunities they have to progress and and to grow as an employee have not diminished. In fact, this might be a fantastic opportunity to work on all those things you haven't had a chance to do previously. Um, create opportunities to engage with your team and say, hey, work might be a little slow right now, but Let's look at ways we could be more innovative when we get back to the office, or if we could work on anything um, that where previously we haven't had the time to, what would it be? What would you want to work on? What outcomes would you want to see? So ask and, and, and get people thinking maybe outside of the box to really engage with them and keep their motivation, motivation up. Um, ask more. So use this as a chance to ask more, tell less, and listen more. So this is a great opportunity as a leader to really learn more from our team members, um, to engage more and to understand maybe where their passions lie, um, where their inspiration lies. These might be an opportunity for you to really see, wow, this is somebody who has some really fantastic ideas and they might really move the business forward um, when we return back and they're gonna hit the ground running. So foster those opportunities and those experiences. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. I hope that it has been helpful for you and I hope that it um, gives you some ideas in, in how to engage with your team and how to lead virtually. This is a starting point. Um, so I hope to share more webinars with you on all manners of leadership and well-being. And I wish you uh, a great week and take care. Thank you very much.